Hey, what's going on, family? You guys already know what day it is. It is the day after Sunday. Welcome to another Eat Up Mondays with your boy Trevor Pope. I am excited for you guys to join me on today. Today is a blessed day, um, uh, which every day is a blessed day, but um, I'm just thankful that my son Trevor Jr. turns 11 today. So I thank God for him and thank God for his life and thank God for him allowing me to have a Trevor Jr., especially uh, with my past and the things that I came through that people just thought I wasn't going to survive. But thankfully, the Lord had another plan for my life, just like he thankfully had one for yours. So here we are today giving God praise for all of the wonderful things that he's done in our lives. And once again, I am thankful for my son seeing another birthday turning 11 years old. It is truly a blessing. But listen, before we dig into this meal, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please click that subscribe button. And after you click the subscribe button, you only have one more job to do, and that is to click the bell and it will notify you every time we upload a video. Listen, we're not going to talk anymore over the food. It's already been prepared. It is already on the table. It is ready to be eaten. So without further ado, guys, let's dig in. Guys, I know that there is a lot going on. Uh, there's so many different things going on in the world, no matter what part of the world you live in. I know, you know, the big talk right now is everything that's going on between Russia and Ukraine, um, the gas prices, food prices, uh, possibilities of war and just all of these things, you know, that right now we're hearing the chatter on and being bombarded by, you know, I just wanted you guys to just be encouraged and I wanted to share this message today because I thought it would be relevant, uh, not only to today's time and the things that we're dealing with, but, you know, this is something that is re is relevant to all of us, you know, saved and not saved, but especially those that are saved because, you know, with what I'm going to share, you can understand these things. And if you don't understand them, prayerfully, you will understand them today. But this is something that we should all have a goal to do, but we know that it is hard not to do this when you don't have a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when you don't have the Holy Spirit. But let's get into it. First Peter chapter five, and we're going to be starting off in the eighth verse, and it reads as follows. First Peter five and eight says, be sober, be village, vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, your adversary, your enemy, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So the scripture says, listen, the enemy is walking around, you know, as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But it gives us two things we need to do in the beginning of that A verse. It says to be sober and to be vigilant. Now, most people, when they see the word sober, the first thing they think of is that you shouldn't be drunk and you, you know, uh, it's about drinking, but it's not talking about that here. And not to say that we should be walking around drunk because the same thing, the thing applies. Obviously you don't want to be, um, you know, a drunkard or somewhere drunk, you know, and give the opportunity to the devil to take advantage of you. But here, it goes a little deeper than just drinking. The word sober here means marked by seriousness, showing self-control. So it says, listen, in your walk with Christ, you know, as you are living in this day and time, you should be very serious about your faith, very serious about your walk and, be, and very uh, serious about being under control, having self-control. Why? Because we know that when the enemy comes, he's always coming, luring, you know, trying to lure us away with something, trying to entice us with something. And if we are not careful and we don't have that self-control, which could be found in the power of God through his spirit, how many know he will have an opportunity to devour us if we are not careful, especially those of us that are not under the hedge of protection of the Lord. But it says, be sober. So that's marked by seriousness, showing self-control. The word vigilant means to be watchful, wide awake, sleepless, 
keenly alert to or heedful of trouble or danger. So you should be alert of danger at all times. You should be able to see danger when it is in your face. You should be able to know exactly what it is, identify it and get away from it. But listen, let me go back to the beginning because this, this, this definition is very important. Vigilant, once again, is to be watchful, wide awake, sleepless, keenly alert to or heedful of trouble or danger as while others are sleeping or unsuspicious. And if you know anything about, you know, uh, present day life or since you've been living, especially since you've been saved and you understand spiritual things, you realize that a lot of people are sleeping on a lot of things and a lot of people are unsuspicious about a lot of things. But what makes this uh, this this passage of scripture is so beautiful is because the one that is telling us this is somebody that knows what he's talking about firsthand. Because if you remember, he could not stay awake and pray with Jesus one hour. And Jesus kept telling him, listen, pray lest you fall into temptation. And what happens to Peter? He goes off. He cuts some people out. You know, he pretty much backslides because he goes back to his old life. And by the grace of God, the Lord went and got him and he was able to fulfill fulfill his, his, his destiny here on the earth, you know, all by the grace of God, but he is someone that knows exactly what he's talking about. We can learn from him because he's telling us from experience. Listen to what he says to be watchful, wide awake, sleepless. This is something that he was not able to do, but here's something um, that you will find interesting. If you remember the story of Job, right? When Satan appeared with the with the other sons of God, when he appeared with the sons of God, the Bible says that God asked him, Satan, what are you doing? And Satan says, walking to and fro. Think about it. This is all he said. If you go back to the book of Job, both times God asked him, he says, walking to and fro. But if you notice, that's all he said. But God knew what he really meant because immediately God says, have you considered my servant Job? But what he was really saying is what Peter tells us here, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about. Look, here's the rest. He didn't say this to God because God already knew seeking whom he may devour. So when he said to God, I'm just walking to and fro. God knew what he meant. I'm walking to and fro looking for somebody to devour. But here, Peter gives it to us plainly, clearly, but he is somebody that has went through this firsthand. This is a this is a beautiful, beautiful passage of scripture. I pray that you guys share this with somebody because I think this is really going to encourage them. Every time I read this story and just read what Peter said, I, I just think it's so powerful. But let's read on. Verse nine says, whom resist? Now it's going to tell us what we need to do. This is what Peter, he's telling us what we need to do. Whom resist steadfast in the faith? That word resist there means to oppose, to stand firm against, to refuse to cooperate with, to keep from yielding to. And who else in the Bible that we can name that knows this better than anybody? We can go all the way back to the beginning of time and with our sister Eve who could not resist. She could not resist the temptation that she was being tempted with. She did not oppose it. She did not stand firm against. She refused. She did not refuse to cooperate with it. And, and guess what? She wasn't able to not yield to it. And then unfortunately, the Bible says that she took an eight and gave to Adam and he did eat also. But here Peter is saying we have to resist them, oppose them. How? Steadfast in the faith. That word steadfast means firm, fixed, settled, or established. So we, so we should be firm in our faith, fixed in our faith. Listen to what the rest of the definition of steadfast is, not changing or wavering. So you should not be wavering in your faith or changing in your faith. It can't be one day I truly trust in the Lord and believe in the Lord a hundred percent. And then the next day, I don't really know if Jesus is real. I don't know if he really came or if he, he, uh, ever existed. No, either you believe it or you don't, because if you don't stand firm, if you're not steadfast in your faith, you are not going to be able to resist the devil when he comes for you. But here's another key. Oh, this I, guys, I, listen, I got to slow down. I love these passages of scripture here. Peter really lays it out for us. Look, he tells us whom resists steadfast in the faith. Here's another beautiful line. 
knowing this is something that you have to know that the same afflictions, the same one, guys, you're not special. I'm not special. We are all going through this. All of us that are followers of Christ is going through this, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished. That word accomplished means done in your brethren that are in the world. It is happening to them as well. It is not just you get that out of your head. They are going through it as well. And the only way they are going to get through it is to resist this enemy, resist the devil, resist the temptations, stead fast in the faith. Let's park right there for a second, guys. This is something that you have to know and always remember. You are not the only one going through this. You are not the only one going through these trials and tribulations. You are not the only one that's being tested financially or tested mentally. No, there are other brothers and sisters in Christ going through the same thing. And when you get that understanding and when you have that locked in, you will find comfort that, listen, I'm not the only one going through this. And guess what? I'm sure just like God did Elijah, he can show you 7,000 others, 70,000 others, 700 others. He's seven others. He will be able to show you somebody that is going through the same exact thing that you are, but they have not you know, bow down to the devil. They not, they have not gave in to his temptation or his, you know, uh, him, you know, trying to lure them in and entice them. He can always show us guys, somebody else that is going through the same thing that stood tall, stood strong on his word. I love it. I love it. I love it. Verse 10 says, but the God of all grace, mm, he's about to give us some good news here, but the God of all grace, who, who have called us unto his, his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, not ours, but his. And this is why we, we should take comfort because we know that he is responsible for us. Remember, we talked, uh, I believe, last week, uh, Psalm 37, where it says it talked about the salvation of, of the righteous is of the Lord. Our saving, our being rescued in times of trouble is a part of him. When we belong to him, he cannot flat leave you. He cannot turn his back on you and walk away when trouble has found you. This is beautiful stuff. I Listen, God is awesome. I'm fired up. I know sometimes... I know you guys don't really see me like this a lot, but just reading through these scriptures, it is so beautiful and it is so strengthening. You know, um, when you hear these scriptures, it just continues to confirm everything that we already know about the Lord, everything that we already live with the Lord. And somebody, you needed this today, you know, because even though I may not be in a place of feeling like um, I'm down and out or whatever, but just me reading this is just building strength in me, building strength in me for whatever is coming. And we know that something is always going to come at some time or another. But look at verse 10 once again, but the God of all grace who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, ye have suffered a while. There's going to be suffering. Don't let bad preaching and teaching and, and whatever tell you that you're not going to go through. And don't let it tell you that if you're going through, it's because you don't have any faith or you're not giving well. And no, no, no. Everybody is going to suffer just like our Lord and Savior did. Roman, Romans 8 tell us that, listen, that we're not going to be glorified with him if we are not partakers of his suffering. We have to go through suffering. So it says, after that, ye have suffered a while. This is a promise. You will suffer. How much? I don't know. But it says, after you have done this, that God will make you perfect. He will establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. And one more scripture I want to read is James chapter 4 and verse 7. It says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. We need to be submitted to God, guys. We, he, we, he, we need to be solely his. And this doesn't mean that we got everything together, but our faith should be like, listen, if I'm going to trust anybody, it's going to be the Lord. I, I can't take nobody else's word for it but the Lord. If you're not talking like the Lord talking and his word is talking, we don't have nothing to say. And that don't mean that I can't be friends with you or can't be cordial with you, but I'm not going to speak against the word. It says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Here's that word again. Resist the devil. Oppose him. Stand firm against him. Refuse to cooperate with him. 
Do not yield to him. Resist the devil. And what will he do? What does the word say he will do? And he will flee from you. You ain't got to argue back and forth with him. You ain't got to keep talking to him. Because this was the problem with what happened with Eve. When you start to conversate with him, when you start to have intercourse with him, and remember I talked about that in some episodes ago, there's two definitions of intercourse. There is a sexual intercourse, but there's another definition of intercourse, dealings or communications between individuals. And that's what she was doing, communicating with him when she should have just resisted him, opposed him. And eventually he would have went away. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. That's neither here nor there. Jesus has been sent. We've been redeemed. So hallelujah and thank God. Amen. But when I think about these scriptures about resisting steadfast in the face, faith, resisting the devil and he will flee. It reminds me of those movies that we watch, right? When there's that knock on the door, boom, 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 boom. And, you know, when I look at how our lives are and how we, we that are saved, how we have the Holy Spirit, it's like, let's, let's say, you know, that, that spiritual door is being knocked on. And, you know, when you look at a natural door, what does it have? It has a peep, a peephole. And that's like the Holy Spirit giving us the opportunity to see who this enemy is, see what this danger is. Just remember what Vigilance said, keenly alert to or heedful of trouble or danger. So it's like we have the peephole and we see the danger, right? But what do we see? We see somebody keeps knocking. They keep dangling little things in front of the peephole. Oh, look, I know you want this. Just like Eve, God does know that the day that you eat of this fruit, like he's dangling, he's doing all this stuff. And what happens in these movies when you see these movies and somebody's knocking and, you know, they're using fake names. It's me, Mickey, you know, they're saying whatever, you know, what happens? The person cracks the door with the little chain on the door because they say, okay, well, if I'm going to open it, at least let me just crack it with the little chain on it. And when they realize that it's danger, guess what? It is too late. What happens? They try to close it back and the person put their little boot in the door. You know what I'm saying? And they, they can't no longer close the door. And then eventually the door come down on their back because the person busts in. And what I'm saying with all of this is that, listen, do not open the door for the devil. Resist him and he will flee. Do not touch that door, guys. Leave that door alone. Look through the peephole. You know, allow the spirit to show you. You see it. Don't start talking, you know, through the door to him. None of that. Resist him and he will flee. Let him talk. You know, what, what do we do when people knock on the door that we don't want to see or talk to or whatever have you? We just stay quiet. And we let them keep knocking and knocking, some longer than others. And then eventually they close that door and they walk off. And that's what we have to do with the devil. Let him keep talking. Let him keep dancing. Let him keep tempting. Eventually, when we ignore him long enough, he will flee. Listen, guys, go back and read 1 Peter 5. Beautiful chapter of scriptures. Go read it for yourself. Listen, I pray that this encouraged you guys. Please start sharing these messages, these scriptures with other people, even if you don't share the message, read the scripture that I just read, explain some of the things I just said to them, because we need this in this time. All of these things that's going on around us, believe it or not, the devil are using some of these things to try to get at us and scare us and tempt us, resist all of that. We know what's going on and what's real and what's not, but at the end of the day, we are trusting in the Lord. God forbid if something happened to me, in the midst of this crazy, chaotic world, at least I know that I trusted in the Lord. I believed in the Lord. I belong to the Lord and I'm going to go home with the Lord as long as I continue to stand on his word. Like Jesus said in John 15, he says, abide in me and I will abide in you. That word abide means to remain. Listen, I'm remaining with the Lord no matter what happens. I have no control over this life. You know, I have no control over my life, you know, because I want to be led by the Lord. But know that I love you guys. I pray that this meal nourished you the way that it nourished me. And until the next time we share a beautiful spiritual meal together, Shalom.